Thank you, Brita. Uh, I'll switch between the next uh, two. Uh, uh, Professor Mia Horowitz uh, will come before uh, Professor Ehud Gazit because she has uh, teaching <laughs> uh, <coughs> uh, to do. A new approach for treating lysosomal storage disorders. Good morning, everyone, and I'll be talking today uh, about new approaches for treating lysosomal uh, storage diseases, and I'll give Gaucher disease as a proof of concept. And Gaucher disease is a genetic disease inherited as an autosomal recessive trait, and it is due to accumulation of uh, the lipids, glucose ceramides, mainly in cells of the reticuloendothelial system, namely in macrophages. And this accumulation is due uh, uh, two mutations in the uh, gene encoding the lysosomal enzyme, glucose ribosides. Uh, due to the accumulation uh, of um, uh, glucose ceramides, which is due to the mutations in the gene encoding the lysosomal enzyme, glucose ribosides, the patients may suffer from bone um, uh, necrosis, pains, and um, uh, fractures. Uh, they suffer from enlarged spleen and the uh, and, uh, liver, and uh, they have uh, a decrease, significant decrease in, uh, in uh, uh, platelet count and hemoglobin uh, level, and they, um, they, uh, the disease will be also associated with a neurological disease. What do we know about the normal enzyme and the mutant enzyme? We know that the enzyme, normal enzyme is synthesized on ER-bound polyribosomes enter the ER, and it, if it is recognized by the ER quality, quality control mechanism, the ERQC uh, of the ER, which is made of proteins known as chaperones, and if it is recognized as uh, normally folded, then it um, very simply, and make it very simple, it lifts the, uh, the ER toward the Golgi from where it is trafficked to the lysosomes. So the enzyme, uh, <coughs> the normal enzyme finds uh, its way to the lysosome where it finds the substrate, the substrate, the glucose is ceramic, and <coughs> catalyzes the hydrolysis of the substrate, and everything is okay, and it's very nice. What happens with the mutant enzyme? For years we thought that the same that happens to the normal enzyme happens also to the mutant enzyme. Namely, it is synthesized, enters the ER, tested, checked, everything is okay, leaves the ER toward the lysosome, but it arrives to the, it, uh, uh, traffics to the lysosome, and in the lysosome it has less activity toward the substrate, so there is attenuated um, uh, uh, um, uh, the, uh, attenuated uh, hydrolysis of the substrate, and the substrate therefore accumulates. But in the last years, we found that this is uh, not right, and what happens is actually that the mutant enzyme is recognized by the, e by the ERQC as misfolded. And as a misfolded protein, it is retrotranslocated to the cytoplasm, where it gets ubiquitinated and degraded in the protosome. So actually, the mutant enzyme and the normal enzyme does really work. The normal enzyme, the mutant enzyme, okay, uh, have actually different routes, intercellular right, route, mutant enzyme mostly will be degraded, and normal enzyme uh, will, uh, will find its way to the lysosome, and the question is, can we find a way, of course, to bring mutant enzyme to the lysosome? So, what we've shown in the last years was that all mutant glucose oxidase variants show ER localization, ER endoplasmic reticulum, I'm sorry, uh, proteasomal degradation, and the degree of ER retention and proteasomal degradation determines Gaucher disease severity. However, we still have patients with exactly the same mutation or mutation that, so, that show different, that present different uh, Gaucher disease severity, which means mutation is necessary and very important, but it's not, uh, um, it's the major cause, but there are other factors that may affect severity beyond uh, the mutation itself. And we assume that heterogeneity between patients with the same genotype is determined by the ERQC machinery, which is different in different patients, even siblings, and is determined by polymorphisms. Polymorphisms, changes between us, which are not mutations. They don't cause disease, but they are different between us. So what factor may affect ERQC? And one factor will be the level of intracellular cholesterol. And it is known that intracellular cholesterol level in the cell comes from two sources. One is synthesis. It doesn't work. One is synthesis. I'm sorry. 
No, it doesn't work. One is synthesis, okay. One is synthesis in the ER, okay, and then it is um, um, distributed in all membranes, cellular membranes, and the other source is uh, uh, via the lipoprotein uh, particle um, with the LDL, uh, through the LDL receptor. So we do have free cholesterol uh, and cholesterol in the cell. But we know that if free cholesterol levels uh, in the cell rises, then the, uh, the, ER, cholesterol, the, the ER calcium uh, stores um, uh, decreases, and this may cause cholesterol-induced cell death or apoptosis. So actually, it's very important to keep a homeostasis of cholesterol level. Cholesterol level has to be... Uh, uh, at a certain, uh, cholesterol has to be at a certain level, not too high, not too low. So we asked whether cholesterol levels, free cholesterol levels, can change severity of Gaucher disease. And we made, uh, we had an advantage of having uh, cells from uh, two brothers, uh, uh, Gaucher disease brothers, um, uh, from the same family with exactly the same mutation but they showed a completely different uh, Gaucher disease severity. One, w one was severely affected by the disease and died at the age of 28 uh, years ago, while the other one is at the age of around 60, very moderately, uh, moderately affected, doesn't even need uh, therapy. So we asked whether there is a change uh, or a difference in cholesterol level between the cells of the two brothers, and we tested total cholesterol level, free cholesterol level by direct uh, measurement or indirect staining uh, with Philippine, and you can see that in the severely affected brother there was almost twice as much cholesterol, total cholesterol and free cholesterol, and the same is true in terms of just staining. You see white is uh, a mark for the staining here in the mildly affected brother, we don't see any staining. So there is really significant change in free cholesterol level and total cholesterol level between these two brothers. Can we change uh, uh, the severity of the disease, and for us, in case of the cells, severity of disease means enzymatic activity. Can we change enzymatic activity by lowering cholesterol level? How can we lower cholesterol level? By lowering its synthesis. How can we do that? By using inhibitor of, uh, of, um, of the uh, main, uh, the key enzyme in cholesterol synthesis, synthesis which is the HMG CoA reductors. So we can use statin. Uh, in order to uh, lower cholesterol level, and we did that, try to see what happens, and we used mevastatin. So, makes the long story short, short we could show that really the uh, free cholesterol, total cholesterol level in the cell decreases dramatically to almost normal um, uh, level, but most important, of course, for uh, Gaucher patients, and that will be true for all uh, patients with other lysosomal diseases, is that we can uh, raise or uh, increase the, the lysosomal enzymatic activity. And here you can see that we could uh, raise by uh, uh, treating the cells with mevastatin, we could, uh, we could uh, raise uh, um, twofold the enzymatic activity uh, in, in uh, comparison to normal or to mildly affected brother. And this is the increase in enzymatic activity. So actually, we could increase enzymatic activity in the cells of the severely affected brother. So just to summarize, free cholesterol level, which leads to calcium depletion in the ER, is one of the factors that affect the ERAT process, the ER-associated gradation uh, of glucose herbozidase. An HMD CoA reductase inhibitor, a statin, relieves the ERQC and allows mutant glucose herbozidase to reach the lysosomes, and there it can degrade substrate. So why is it important? We know today that there are three therapeutic modalities for Gaucher disease, was is enzymatic replacement, enzyme replacement therapy, substrate reduction therapy, and trapeze based therapy. Enzyme replacement therapy, the en recombinant enzyme, is introduced intravenously into patients. Uh, one, <coughs> one product made by Genzyme uh, is already in the market uh, for a long time, uh, and two other products are um, in um, clinical trials by, by the Israeli Potalix company and another one by Shire. Uh, substrate reduction therapy, these are pills uh, that contains an uh, inhibitor of uh, this, the enzyme that, um, uh, synthesize, that synthesizes the substrate. So by uh, giving uh, the, the, the inhibitor, actually there is reduction in the amount of substrate that actually accumulates in the cells. And this is uh, a drug given by Actelion. And then there's the, the, the chaperone mediated therapy. Small molecules are given. Uh, this is also a, in uh, clinical trials. Small molecules are given to patients. The uh, molecules inhibitors actually of the en enzyme. They bind to the enzyme, cheat the ER, 
gets the enzyme out of the R in the lysosome, in the lysosome, the chaperone gets uh, off the, uh, the enzyme, and the enzyme now can work. So what we propose is to combine to combine here the enzyme replacement therapy, substance reduction therapy, or uh, chaperone-based therapy with a statin to lower intracellular cholesterol, and by that increase the lysosomal activity of glucose herbosidase by just uh, pulling out mutant glucose herbosidase from the ER of the patient, and just this is an addition either to the enzyme that comes from outside of the cell or substrate that reduces the amount of substrate in the cell, or this will be a fantastic addition to chaperone, which, is, which does the same thing. It's pulling out the mutant enzyme from the, um, from the ER. And I would like to thank you, and of course, thank Edith, who is the leader of this project. Thank you.